Welcome to Publishing Power Podcast. Today, we have a fantastic guest with us. Her name is Jane Ubell, and she is our guest. She's a former television and film producer. She's also an award-winning entrepreneur. 18 years ago, she figured out how to make money from gift bags, and she built a company that created gifting experiences for the Oscars, the Emmys, the Golden Globe Awards, and nominees. So pretty doggone impressive. Two years ago, she created a new company called Bedside Reading, which is very interesting for all of our authors here. This Bedside Reading places books by the bedsides in luxury hotels, so you can't beat that for book marketing. Welcome, Jane. Thank you so much. It's so good to see you. That's great. I'm so glad. We met up at the Book Expo, and you told me about what you were doing, and this just sounded like wow, this is really great, especially for all my authors who've already published and they're, they're looking for the next step. And this is a rare opportunity, especially now it's cutting edge. So I wanted to bring this in front of our listeners. You're the founder of Bedside Reading. Can you tell us what is Bedside Reading exactly? So Bedside Reading is a program I designed for authors. And the idea is that you want to be in the room. You want your book to be in the room where VIPs, influencers, people that are readers, they're sophisticated, and they people that are talking about books and other cultural things. So you want to be in the room where they are. So if you think about it, if you go into a hotel room, whether it's a Holiday Inn or whether it's the Mandarin Oriental, what do you do? Everybody always looks around the room. They want to see what cool things are going on. And what we decided was that it was a perfect prime real estate. That's how I look at it as real estate. So if you have your, someone's book there, they have two options. They could ignore it or they could pick it up. And actually a third option as it were, and they can read it. So we wanted to give every author a little leg up on everybody else because we are exclusive. We are the first company in the world to do this. And we've added a lot of super uh, layers of marketing that goes along with it. It's not just a passive book sitting in a hotel room or on the, by the bedside. We have layers of media. We are in women's magazines. We're in travel magazines. We have bloggers blogging about us. We write about um, all kinds of different, um, I mean, I write about different books in different, magazines from afar to Hollywood Weekly. So I'm always using my platforms to help the authors that are in my program. So it's multi-layered. And in today's world, you know, if you figure that 2 million books are published annually, how do you stand out? It's overwhelming. I mean, they, they say that a million eBooks are published a year, but that's just eBooks. There's audio books. There's all kinds of um, books being published all around the world in numerous languages. How do you stand out? And that's the challenge that an author has. Exactly. And I understand that they can take these books home, right? They- yes. So the, the concept is an author will place the book or we place the book in a hotel room for the author. It is 1000% complimentary to the recipient. And in fact, when you go to the Mandarin Oriental and you see a card on top of a book that says, Mandarin Oriental, New York, and Bedside Reading, providing complimentary books, take me home. That's what they say. And we want the recipients to feel, wow, not only did they get a gift of the, let's say the retail value is 25 or 30 US dollars, they're getting a gift to take home. They won't be charged for it. There's a positive reinforced feeling of, wow, I just got this gift. Yeah. So that's, it's great for the hotel and it's great for the author. Yeah, it's great when you have a good feeling when you get, you know, that that feeling will go over to the author and that's pretty cool. So how did you get this idea? Tell us. You know, so this, this is a funny story. So yeah. when I was 22 uh, years old, I was, um, I had a boyfriend and he loves scuba diving. And he said to me, if you learn how to scuba dive, I will take you away to the Caribbean. And I went, oh, that sounds fabulous. I was crazy about this guy. He was a little bit older than me and very handsome, romantic. And I learned how to scuba dive. I went to the YMCA in New York City to the scuba diving class. I, got, I learned how to scuba dive. Believe it or not, I got certified in this murky, horrible reservoir in New Jersey on October 31st, 
it was disgusting, it was horrible, but I did it, I got certified, and I was so excited. And we, uh, this guy and I planned this great romantic vacation in St. Martin's, and we went to the Caribbean, we get up to the hotel room, he opens the door, we don't even step through the door, and he turns to me and he goes, Jane, I just wanna tell you, I really like you, but I'm not into you. And <laughs> I was crushed. He said, let's just have a good seven days and be friends. I was devastated. I was rejected before I even got into the hotel room. It was, it was horrible. But my stepmother, Marcia, had given me a book to read. She, I grabbed it right before I like, left for the airport, threw it in my bag, a big, thick book. Mm -hmm. And it was called Cry to Heaven by Anne Rice. And it was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And that book saved my seven-day vacation. We were in this gorgeous, <laughs> I literally... You know, I was scuba, I didn't want to scuba dive. I didn't even care about scuba diving, but the book changed my life because I always remembered whenever you travel, take a book. Even in this today's world, when you have a Kindle or you have an iPhone or an iPad and you could be running out of batteries yeah. and you may not be able to get a charge and you'll have a book by your side all the time. So I figured go now a gazillion years later, I thought to myself, wow, I always remember that you need to take a book on vacation. Why don't I expand that concept? And I did. Yeah, that's great. So sorry about the trip. <laughs> Me too. But you know what? I read a great book. In fact, one day I met Anne Rice uh, and I oh, told nice. her about that. So it was really funny. So, it was <laughs> so Anne Rice is responsible for, responsible for this idea. So thank you, Anne Rice. <laughs> Very well done. So the, how does the program work for the author? And give us a typical, so, typical uh, example. Right. So typically an author will come to me and um, let's see, I, here's a book. Okay, here's a book of mine. Right. So here's a book called Madame Foucault's Secret War. This is a book by Random House, I believe, yes it is. So Random House, the publishers or the indie publisher or the uh, indie author will come to me and they'll say, Jane, we have a book, do you, have a hotel that would match it up. So I look at the book, I go on Amazon, I go get the link, I look at the reviews, I look at the cover, I look at what people saying about it, I look at who published it, when it was published, and then I make a decision if it's right for us. If it is right, I will actually send the link to uh, the Amazon link to my hotels. They'll say yes or no. Every book is vetted. Strict, really, they, it's a tough process. They are, don't take this lightly, they take this seriously because when you have a brand as iconic as the Waldorf Astoria or the Fairmont or the Mandarin Oriental, they don't want anything to tarnish their reputation or their brand. So anything that goes into their rooms are very important to them. And it's real estate. So, and you believe it, you cannot, you, you try to get your book into every hotel room. It's not that easy. So we are, we understand that. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we make sure that the book is appropriate. The hotel says yes or no. And when they say yes, then the, um, the author and I will have a conversation about which hotels were the, would be the best fit, why they would be the best fit. And then we would go to the next um, step. And the next step really would be um, the author will send the hotel a certain number of books from 125 copies all the way up to 250 copies mm -hmm. and then the hotel will place the books in the program we have a fee um, that our authors pay us or the publishers pay us mm -hmm. however we also add lots of layers of media and the media will include um, Hollywood Weekly either a, a shot of their book cover or sometimes it's a Q&A um, I work with Women's World and First for Women, which are big magazines yeah. for women in the United States. And we do giveaways every month of all of our books. And we mm -hmm. usually get about, well, the distribution is about 5.6 million women read these magazines weekly. And we usually get about 75 to 125,000 women, 125,000 women entering to win our giveaway every single Month. So you get lots and lots of eyeballs. We have other media opportunities. The hotels will actually take a photograph of the, ho of the book in their hotel room or on the property and post it on Instagram. We'll take our own photographs and post it on Instagram. We'll, we have a newsletter that goes out every single month 
while we only have 4,000 people in our database, these 4,000 people are readers. Right. So we post twice a month all about the books to all of our readers. So it's, you know, it's layer, 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 layer. And that we are so affordable. Um, we charge at this point $1,500 US wow. for one book, two hotels, all the media. And my bookkeeper yells at me because she goes, what are you doing and giving away the farm? It's ridiculous. Yeah. So, but I want to make it affordable for everybody. I want to create a level playing field. We do a lot of work and every single um, author that I connect with, I feel like I'm their like Jewish mother for a month, which is, that's the way I feel about my authors. You know, I try to brainstorm with them. I try to give them as much of my, you know, 30, 40 years in 30 years in business that I can. So they're getting my brain power. And as you mentioned in the intro, I'm a former TV news producer. Good Morning America, Wall Street Journal, ABC, Entertainment Tonight. I've done it all. I've made movies. So I understand the concept of selling and pitching and marketing. And I get it. So I try to give all of my authors little tidbits of how to you know, market their book, how to use what we give them to further their sales. Now, just to be clear, we don't sell books. We really market the books. Right. So but it has happened where uh, books have gone on. They were on Amazon. Like I have one author, a children's book. Mm -hmm. They were at, um, let's see, 100. No, they were 1.6 million on Amazon. And then while they, um, after one weekend with us, they jumped to, I think it was 31,000. So they had a huge jump in sales. Uh, they jumped in their ranking on Amazon and it was really perfect for them. Yeah. I just want to say at $1,500, that's a basic consultation with somebody like you. I know. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm just like, Can wow. I tell you something? Um, I know, you know something? I just want to tell you, I just had a conversation with a, a, someone in the industry and I said, I think I should throw in, I always try to create added value, like an hour consultation. And they said, an hour, first of all, it's a half hour, number one. Number two, I said, well, what's the value of that? She goes, at least a thousand dollars for a half hour with you, Jane. I went, yeah. okay, I'll add value to it. Yeah. So I'm trying to, you know, my real, my heart is, I get it. I get how lonely it could be being an author. I get how you're isolated. I get that you need a champion. Now I can't be a champion forever. So 30 days, they get me to champion their book. Uh, but you just told me they're getting their book in front of millions, literally those, the, yeah. the, the women's magazine. And uh, I mean, not, and, and that's a general public, which I can say, you know, it's really great to be in these high level uh, hotels that you're going to tell me about. And I want to hear the whole list, but to just get in front of everyday people who, and this magazine stay in the waiting rooms and they stay yes. in the, the home for years and years and years. So it's not a one-time view and it's not just that distribution. It's everybody who's, who picks that up and, you know, that's, that's amazing. That so is, that hands down, there's no doubt in my mind that the value is here. Um, tell us all of the different hotels that we're in. With this. So I just want to, this is, I don't even know if this is fall, but there is a, right behind me, there's a poster. This is kind of fun. And this is from a photograph taken from the uh, Waldorf Astoria, Chicago. Okay. So I don't know if you can see this. Can you see this? Yeah, just a little bit there. <laughs> okay, this is one of our um, hotels. And we work with the Waldorf Astoria, Chicago, Waldorf Astoria, Beverly Hills, mm -hmm. Mandan Oriental, New York, the Mandan Oriental, Washington, D.C., the Aqualina, which is an ultra luxury hotel, Aqualina Resort and Spa in Sunny Isles Beach, Florida. Mm -hmm. We work with um, the uh, Conrad, New York, which is downtown New York City. Yeah. We ju we work with some very cool boutique hotel like hotels, including the Chamberlain in West Hollywood, the Jacquard in Denver. The we're just starting. This is interesting. We're just starting with a hotel in October called um, the James New York. Okay. So the James New York is down in Soho on Grant Street. Very cool. Very hip. Um, sometimes the hotels are four and a half stars, but if they're hip and cool. There's that cool factor as well. Then I have um, 10 or 11 hotels in the Hamptons. Mm -hmm. So the beaches out on Long Island that all the famous, you know, paparazzi and the media and the celebrities go, 
for the summertime. So we have a program <laughs> during the summer mm -hmm. where we place books in the Hamptons at these 10 hotels. And it goes from really Southampton all the way out to East Hampton. And so we saturate, we are the only one doing this in the Hamptons and we saturate the Hamptons with our clients' books. So it's very exciting. Yeah, it is. It's really cool. I, I, I've never heard of anything like this, so it kind of, it caught my attention. So I know it sounds like this works and the return on the investment, any, any additional things you want to tell us about on that? Well, you know, yes, because every time I finish with a client, they, and it takes about two months to get all the media back. We create something called the media recap and in the media recap, it shows that they're in our, we take an official photograph every single month of all the books for that month. Then we place it in the Hollywood Weekly and Women's World, First for Women, all the Bauer Media outlets, which is about um, five or six online magazines, and some of them are in print. So then we have the, we, we screenshot what the hotels do for the clients. Sometimes the hotels have a newsletter. They push it out to their people. Sometimes they have a blog. Sometimes they just have a, and they have a magazine. Mm -hmm. So it's always layer, 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 layer. But at the end of the day, when you talk about the ROI, what does that mean? The mm -hmm. ROA, ROI is that we are getting your book into getting a book in front of all these millions and millions of eyeballs, like five, point, wow. five to 20 million people every single month. Now, does that increase sales? That's not up to me and I don't track that. But it absolutely increases visibility. And every author is a brand. And as a brand, you need to be out there all the time in many different layers, whether it's a podcast, it's a uh, magazine, it's a hotel, it doesn't matter. You have to be out there and you have to always be marketing. We mm -hmm. also started something called the, our 30 day Instagram blitz. It's in, it's in, we're beta testing it now. Yeah. It starts July 1st where we've taken seven authors and we're for 30 days, we've created seven unique, um, I guess, Instagram posts, videos, photographs, we have certain questions. And it really came from one of my clients that came into my program, Natalie Banks, who wrote the Canary Song. And the reason why I said to her, she has 12,700 people on her Instagram. I said, how did you do that? And she goes, here's how I did it. She was telling me. And I said, how many books have you sold? She goes, 10,000 in 19 months. I said, you've sold 10,000 books in 19 months? That's incredible. How did you do that? Yeah. And can we replicate it? Yes. So we are going to try to replicate it starting July 1st. Mm -hmm. uh, stay tuned, see if it works. And if it does, we'll open up that program to everybody, to the masses. And let's see if it works. We don't know if it's going to work, but we'll try. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Uh, Instagram is a powerhouse. And yes. I mean, this is all about branding. This really is. And, and what better way to be branded in a positive manner than to be held with such high esteem and in such prominent areas? I, I can't think of anything that really does better. So um, there must be some kind of vetting, though. So what types of books do you accept? Because so I, I'm not we, guessing this isn't for everyone. <laughs> it's not for everybody. So the first thing is we stay away from anything like Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah. That's number one. Yeah. We stay away from anything religious based, faith based, um, political. Well, I love political books. We cannot do that because we just can't. Right. Uh, we, that's pretty much it, you know, but we have to make sure, look, there are great covers out there and there are really horrible covers. Mm -hmm. If you are self-published, I want you to think, like the big boys think of like how does random house package their books and i can give a whole seminar on really phenomenal covers and why they're great mm -hmm. and really terrible covers and why they will never they'll never entice someone to buy the book or read the book right. and there is a science behind it and it has to do about colors and fonts and what you do and how to market your books so i will tell you that the first part of vetting it is the cover. Okay. If the cover doesn't sing to me, it's out immediately. Then I look at the font, I look at the topic and I look at the book. And so the vetting, there is a vetting process and the hotels have a vetting process. Mm -hmm. so that's what we do. Okay. And, and do the hotels ever reject a book? Absolutely. All the time. And it kills me. Sometimes <laughs> it does kill me where I, like, I just have, listen, I, I, I cannot mention the name, but 
I have an author. He went to one of our five-star hotels. Mm -hmm. He saw the program. He emailed me immediately. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I was staying at this hotel. I have a book. I'd like to be in there. And right. the company that is my that I did the book for yeah. uh, actually had a huge conference at the hotel. So I emailed the hotel and I said, this perfect. I said to the hotel, this author would like to stay at your hotel. This mm -hmm. company paid a lot of money to be there with a the conference. They'd like to put his book in the rooms and they said no. So they said no for whatever reason they said no. Mm -hmm. So I went to other hotels and I said, I think this is an important book. And I had two hotels agree. So we're mm -hmm. fine. But the fact that the hotel that he stayed at didn't agree, what no. could I do? You know no. what? I don't, you know something, people's jobs are on the line when they say yes or no. And I don't right. want to ever push a book if they feel that their job is going to be in jeopardy. Okay. I want the person that's saying yes to feel great and proud and it'll be explosive right. you know, for them. I, I, nothing's better than the front desk manager going into a hotel and when I say, oh, I'm Jane from Bedside Reading, then they go, oh, our, our guests love the program. This is awesome. This is great. So glad that you're here. Thank you so much. What can I do for you? Right. I love that because I don't hear that enough from my contacts. I actually have to go to the hotels to hear this more, yeah. but that's okay. It's fine. Yeah. No, it's good. But so what, what part of the program do the authors need to, to know about? What do they're, they're interested. We've got their attention. So, We've got millions right, so, right. So I know you'll have a link. So the, the, the first way or the, the first part of the process, they mm -hmm. have to apply. So okay. there's an application form. It's very simple. It's basically your name, when the book was published, the genre, and you must include a link to the Amazon uh, placement on Amazon okay. to do that. Okay. Um, and so that it, I can easily take a look at it and see it. If we're not interested, we'll let you know. If we're interested, we'll let you know. It's a very simple process. Once I am interested or one of my, I have five people on my team, once they were interested, then the next step is really to have a conversation with me to talk about expectations, to talk about how we, what our process is. And I always like to manage everyone's expectations. We're about promotion, promotion, promotion. We don't sell books. I make it very, very clear. Mm -hmm. And if I see opportunities for a book to uh, get it out there, then I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell the author what I think they might want to do uh, to help, to help, me and help them promote the book. And I'll right. give you an example. I know October is um, a month for, um, I think it's like in the United States, National Awareness of Abuse Month for Abuse for Women. Mm -hmm. And a book just came into my world and it's a great story. And there is a thread in there about a woman being abused, which is not a topic I would naturally put into a hotel. Right. But I said to her, because October is like National Awareness Month of, of that topic, mm -hmm. I said, what you should be doing is when you see something in the news that's politically charged, you can respond as the author of this book and as an expert now in your field. Exactly. And you can say, and I'll give you an example. I mean, recently there was an accusation of um, a woman accusing somebody of uh, rape on, in the news. And I said, now's your opportunity to say any woman that it feels that they're in that same position, whether it's by a spouse or anybody else, here's something that you can do. And I'm an expert and I'm also the author of this book. Right. So you exactly. can use topics in the news if you're an expert or if your book has a thread of that topic or subject matter, be that expert and use it. Mm -hmm. One of the other things that we do is there is a free 30 day book um, download, if you want, that uh, a publisher and I wrote together. It's called the 30 day book marketing guide. It's free. Nice. You don't have to be part of my program. You can go online and download it. And that, it's pretty simple. That's what you can do. That's great. That's great. So definitely, definitely want to check that out. So yeah. is there a downside to any of this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What a good question. Of course, there's a downside to everything. So first <laughs> of all, the downside is that emotionally, you're going to say, well, I didn't make any sales, so it didn't work. But you have to understand that I don't make sales. 
-hmm. we promote the book. Do we do what we say we're going to do? And the answer is yes. And we prove it by having a media recap. So we back up what we say. So you can see it in, in color and black and white. That's number right. one. Downside. The thing about a book is that you are, every author needs to know there are two sides of that, of what they're doing. And it's the creative side where they're creating a book and they love it and they're passionate about it. And the second side is that books are a business. And if they don't get that, then that's, they're done. And I always say, who is funding that business? I ask people, are you self-funding it? Do you have a sponsor for mm -hmm. your book? Uh, have you aligned yourself with like-minded companies to create value for that company so that they could purchase your books, do it, create a giveaway? Mm -hmm. They should be doing that all the time. So in my opinion, the downside is that it's not magic, it's hard work. Right. And it's not one thing, it's many, many, many things. There is no secret anymore about how to make a uh, bestseller happen. It's everything. So in my opinion, that's what has to happen. Yeah, I, I think that's probably the m biggest misconception I get from people who come to our company. They've written the book. They are now, they've committed to professional editing. So that's right. really great. However, they think now I'm done. You know, I can format, they, put a book cover beginning. on it. And, and I'm like, oh, welcome. <laughs> You've just joined this long journey. And it's a very right. special journey. Not everybody's on it. But, you know, the idea of, of marketing and promotions and sales and launching and your audience, all of these different things. And, and as the technology has brought us more tools, it's also become more complicated in right. the amount of things that not only what's available and, and getting through all that, but also uh, just making sure that you're, you can do each one correctly. It's better to do one or two of them really, really well than it is to try to do all of them when you, you need experts. That's exactly. That's the biggest thing. For me, you need a guide. If you're going to get from point A to point B and you're going on this long tour and you've never been in this area before, a guide the first time through at least is going to get you there safely and you're going to learn so much more about it. And when you come back to your second round of books or your editions, whatever, then you're more, be prepared. more prepared. You know, one thing I will tell you, my husband's a former professional tennis player. He played mm -hmm. Wimbledon, the U S open, the French open, Australian open, et cetera. And my husband has a, has had a tennis coach for 10 years when, when he was on the circuit. Yeah. And after you're done playing tennis, then you go into the business world or you go into the business world and people don't realize that you need, you may need a coach. I have a business coach. My husband has a business coach. We all need help along the way. And if you're an author, why not get a writing coach or get a marketing coach or bring somebody on your team that has your best interests at heart. It's not going to break the bank. And it was really in your court. I know what, no, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I think Go every ahead. day I say um, to myself or uh, to the people I talk to at least once a day, I say, you simply don't know what you don't know. And that is true. once you accept that and you just start listening and, and, and inviting other people in to right. get that information, the world just starts changing and opening up in these amazing ways. And uh, that's the guides and the mentors and the coaches and the therapists and everything else we need in life to get us through it all. No, I, I agree with you. And I think it's really, you know, it's being a writer is solitary and I get it. And it's fun to talk to somebody about it. And, you know, when you bring in somebody like me who has a very different or unique perspective, Mm -hmm. then I think it's something that could be helpful. Absolutely. Absolutely. So during the month of August, you yeah, are August. celebrating indie author in the. Yes. What is yes. that? What is that? Tell us what that means for all of us who are not in Hampton. <laughs> so <laughs> celebrating. Here's what I know. During the summertime, August in the Hamptons is you can't move. The traffic is ridiculous. Every hotel is filled to the gills. And what do I know? I know that uh, the media is out there, mm -hmm. the publishing industry is out there, the um, business people are out there, the movers and shakers all spend a summer in the Hamptons in August, or the month of August. Okay. And I said to myself, well, you know what? 
Michael Connolly doesn't need a lot of help to sell his books, nor does Louise Penny. Yeah. But if you have an indie author, they need to be where those people are because you never know who's going to read it, who's a movie producer, who is a um, publisher that will say, hey, this is actually really interesting. So yeah. what we do is we put these really sweet tote bags um, in the room of each hotel room that we're in. They're filled with four or five books. It's, it's a really charming um, way to present books. And we love the indie authors. We do mix it up with some major authors. So I, I mean, we do. But we try to <laughs> get, give these authors attention. And one of the fun things that's happened for me this summer is that I've become the, one of the go-to people in the Hamptons in the media where people say, okay, Jane, what are you reading this weekend? Nice. So I could pick up a book and I can say, this is my weekend pick and here's why. So I'm actually, my weekend picks are in the uh, Southampton Press, the East Hampton Press, 27 East, um, which, are, which is what is read throughout this summer. So I'm really excited about that. That's so, great. Yeah. So when you have an independent author or a small press, you want to get your books out there and that's what we do. The Hamptons in particular, um, I decided that August was Indie Month because I felt this is the best use of my powerful relationships right? and the best use for my authors. And that's what I'm doing. That's great. Again, it's, yeah. it's about branding. And you mentioned that you, you mix it in with the other larger ones. Who wouldn't want yes. to be in the same bag with the, you know, uh, no the established yeah. authors? Because that's then it right. puts you on the same level. Same as the hotel. It's, it's that position. You know, that's you know, you're right. It's positioning because in fact, one of my clients, uh, his name is Matt Coyle. He wrote a great book called Wrong Light and I love him to pieces. And the reason why he joined me is that he knows that in one of my hotels a year or so ago, I had, when I started, I had Harlan Coben, oh, no. who's a big thriller writer. I had uh, Salman Rushdie. I started mm -hmm. with Salman Rushdie was my first book. I now have, um, uh, Charles Schwab is going to be his book. His, uh, his book is going to be in my program. Uh, the, there's a book called Trailblazer uh, by the creator and founder of Salesforce. He's going to be in my program. So we take business books, yeah. fiction, nonfiction, children's, wellness, spa books. Uh, you know, I just got a client because she was at Shutters on the Beach in California. And she said, I, how come I want to be where this is? This is cool. Yeah. So that's what you know, it's great to be in good company. And the good company is the hotel brand as well as who else is in the room with you. Exactly. So exactly. We do mix and match and it's fun. Mm -hmm. It sounds like, it sounds you like a phenomenal what? program. It, you know, when I was at Good Morning America, mm -hmm. there was a woman there who was the uh, booker of the authors on the show. And every day, and my, I was at the time, I think I was uh, like a researcher or something. And I was sitting outside, my desk was outside her office. And every day, UPS and the, the FedEx would come with packages of books for her. And I was so jealous all the time. I went, why isn't that me? Well, now it is me. I kind yeah. of created this great business where I get free books. So who doesn't love that? Yeah. And I get to like read what I want to read. I get to write what I want to write. And I get to promote what I want to promote. So it's kind of like the ideal situation. And yeah. being an entrepreneur, you know, look, there's certainly ups and downs to being an entrepreneur, but I guess I get to run my own life. Yeah, of course. And that's wonderful. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I have no doubt in my mind that people want to find out more about this. Where can they do It's bedsidereading.com, but how do they go right. about contacting you? And what's the next step? So on, right on my website that you can apply, okay. uh, there's, and if you, I, I'll give you a link as well. And if, but if they come directly to me, there's always a um, kind of place to put where you heard about me. Okay. I, we really want them to mention your name and your, right. um, your company. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's, it's very simple. Just apply. I huh? look at everything um, and we do, we'll take eBooks. We'll take audio books. Um, we'll do uh, print books. And every book is unique. And we take a look at everything about that book before we say yes. And but then once we say yes, then the hotel is to say yes. So it's two layers of vetting. Sure. sure. And that's fine. I mean, I think 
being an author, you put yourself out there for, for a lot, but this is definitely a chance that I have not seen before. And I think that is very exciting for authors to, to get this opportunity to, to learn yes. more about how it all works and see what happens. No problem. So we will just, uh, we will go dig into that and of course, find out more and more and more about that. So if you'd like to apply, we'll put the link down here below and uh, come check it out. Bedside Reading with Jane Zubel. Thank you so much for coming and visiting with us today. It's phenomenal. It's well, it's so great to see you. And I know um, you're far away and I hope that you'll come to the States more often. <laughs> I will headed that way soon. So no okay, problem. Great. Perfect. Thank you so much. And we'll talk again soon. Take care. My pleasure. Thank you.